clouds. Being one of the most common phobias found in studies, it's not a strange fact that the mere mention of the word can fill many with a sense of fear and dread. But with the recent and quickly growing trend, you don't have to be a chlorophobic to feel the same amount of violation when within the presence of the eccentric people in the white makeup and baggy clothing. If you are not aware of the situation at hand, consider this your recap. For much debated reasoning, pranksters have begun popping up and dressing themselves up as clowns, not to make balloon animals or provide party entertainment, but rather scare and terrorize the populace of their towns, and in some cases, threatening their lives. Though many victims have fought against their costume-clad horrors, and plenty of arrests have been made, there is still no signs of the trend slowing down as it spreads across the United States, up north into Canada, and even across seas into the UK. Tonight, we will look at some of the most terrifying encounters with the killer clowns in a pure intent of helping spread awareness to this joke that has gone too far. Perhaps the best case to look at first is the one that started it all. The kindling that built the fire that quickly became an out of control inferno. On August 21st of 2016, Greenville resident Donna Arnold was thrown into a state of panic when her 12 year old son came to her after returning from school complaining that there was a group of people in the nearby forest dressed as clowns, whispering and making strange noises. Skeptical of her son's claim and seeing the situation as too far-fetched to possibly be true, Arnold reluctantly went out to the woods. Much to her shock, and perhaps beginning to wish that her son was lying, Arnold saw several clowns chanting and wandering amongst the trees and flashing green laser pointers. Police were immediately called to the location, but were unable to find any evidence of there being activity in the forest, and left the area believing it was all a hoax. However, the claims became harder to ignore as more and more children by the day started approaching Miss Arnold and telling her that there were clowns coming out from the bush and trying to lure them into the woods. It even got so far that children from apartment complexes miles away started reporting the same claim. Clowns trying to have them come into the vast woodlands. Warnings were given out to residents via Facebook, warning parents about the sightings and taking great care when sending their children outdoors, as well as an increase of patrols carried out by Greenville County Sheriff's deputies. Though this is a terrifying situation to consider on its own, most would find it unbelievable that this is only one of hundreds of killer clown spottings. And believe it or not, this is one of the tamer scenarios. This event 
was truly only the beginning of a new form of hell. By the end of the first month of the clown spottings, it had already moved from Southern California and ravaged the entirety of the United States, even moving north to Eastern Canada and moving to its Western areas just as quickly. Due to a lack of extensive details given on the Canadian encounters, possibly an attempt to try and quell the sense of panic, we will rather be quickly analyzing multiple cases that have occurred in the country's provinces in the past three months. In Ontario, a social media group known as Clowns of the Six put Toronto police on high alert in early October as the group made multiple threats to eight different high schools in the area, including, but not limited to, raiding the premises harming staff, and even kidnapping students. In Nova Scotia's capital city of Halifax, multiple sightings were reported, but had no evidence to support them, and the claims were quickly dismissed. But after a terrifying Instagram account was created, titled as Halifax underscore clowns, with a description of we stalking you, so keep your eyes open. We ain't killing, we just creeping. And a profile picture portraying a scary looking clown sitting in front of a local high school in the area, police were forced to begin an investigation, but at this date, nothing has come around. Unlike all the previous cases we have discussed so far, an arrest was made in Clark's Harbor when a 24-year-old male clown was caught chasing a small boy and grabbing at his clothing. However, it seems that the threat of arrest is still not enough motivation for the spree to stop as even the westernmost province of Canada, British Columbia, has had its own share of clown-related terror as two pranksters became quite notorious for hiding behind buses and jumping out at children to scare them. They then proceed to chase them across the streets and continue to have more reports every day. Probably the most terrifying Canadian encounter occurred earlier this month in Quebec. Two friends were driving home on a dark night when they spotted a clown on the side of the road. One of the friends began recording the situation on his phone as the clown just stared at their vehicle for a few seconds before seemingly losing interest and walking away. The relief would only be temporary though as he returns to the road, this time with a chainsaw in hand. You don't have to take my word for it though. You can watch for yourself. Oh, c'est quoi ton clown? Je crois que c'est vraiment un clown en plus gros. Je sais pas ce qu'il fout là en tout cas, mais. Oh, c'est quoi ça? C'est quoi ça? ça. Oh, Vas-y, avance-toi un peu pour voir. Ouais, bah, pas trop non plus. Ouais, attends, bon. attends, ouais, il, a, il a rien, il a rien. Mais qu'est-ce que tu fais quoi là? Oh, gamin, rentre chez toi! Allez là! Dégage! Je bah, regarde, je vais écrire ça à face. Quoi. Allez, vas-y, fous là! Dans la gueule, le flash. Je viens dans ton cul, pas toi. Ouais, ouais, ouais. <rire> putain. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Je sais pas. Pourquoi je baisse Oh putain. Oh, c'est pas une veille, gros, quand même. Je sais pas. Pourquoi c'est pas une veille Putain, non, il est non, malade, non, non, quoi. Recule, gros. Recule, 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 recule. Recule, recule, laisse-moi toi, gros. Barre-toi, barre-toi, viens, arrive, viens, arrive. Oh putain. Oh, c'est quoi ça Oh. Wow. Et taille, taille. As you saw. The clown began to chase the car with a chainsaw revving above his head. But thankfully, the two men managed to return home unharmed. It's hard to say right now, but for us Canadians, I don't think I can say that this will be the last of our torment. As 
as stated multiple times throughout this episode, it is truly astonishing to see the rate in which the killer clown rage has spread. Now not even being restricted to North America as it has crossed seas to the United Kingdom. And for unknown reasons, the encounters found in this area seem to be far more prevalent to taking a violent turn. One such example of these more brutal encounters occurred on the evening of October 9th, 2016, and would change the life of Simon Shinnery forever. Shinnery had just finished using a Lancashire cash service station when he was snuck up upon by a clown. What truly made him panic was not the spontaneous nature of the appearance, nor the morbid makeup, but rather the brandished 10 inch blade in its hand. In a state of desperation and fearing for his life, Shinri successfully defended himself from the attack by grabbing the knife in his bare hand, preventing any vital strikes to be made to his body. However, the action was not flawless as the blade cut into his hand all the way to the bone, lacerating four of his tendons in the process. Through the pain and the mass amount of blood spewing from his wound, Shinnery used his free, functional hand to punch at the clown until it fled, giving him the chance to run home and have his mother fetch for medical assistance. The final results from his injury have revealed permanent damage to his hand, making it borderline non-functional and has been forced to quit his trades job that provides for his nine-year-old son, whom he raises alone. Shinnery is scheduled for a reconstructive surgery, however it is unknown what long-term effects of his injury will be. And from all of us at Dr. Moxmo Readings, we wish Simon only the best through his procedure and recovery. As for the clown who performed the attack, it is yet to be identified and be subject to charges. At the end of the day though, Shinnery has said that he is beyond thankful that it was he who was attacked and not his son or younger nephew. I want to thank you for getting this far. If you enjoyed this entry to Realities of Horror, please leave a like and feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions you might have for a future episode. Who knows, your idea may very well be the next installment of this series. If you enjoy my content and wish to support me even further, feel free to subscribe. I do hope you enjoy the last two episodes of my Halloween Spectacular of 2016, and until the end, I do implore you to be aware of your surroundings as you head out to enjoy your Halloween season. I wouldn't want to read a report about you being the next victim of a killer clown sighting. Until next time, my friends. Stay spookily fabulous.